Hey, good Monday morning to you. Glad you're with me today on the bridge. We're going to be in Psalm 103, so if you get your Bibles and turn there. I think I told you Friday that when I first accepted the Lord many, many years ago, uh, Psalm 103 became a very, very, very important psalm to me. It became one of my favorites and has remained that way. It says so many profound but very simple things that uh, really helped me in my walk and has continued to help me through all the years. So, you know, maybe the simplest but perhaps most profound definition of God's mercy and grace is this. You've all heard it probably for many years. Grace is God giving us what we do not deserve. He's giving us his grace. And mercy is God not giving us what we do deserve. Truly, we, deserve, we, we sinners do not deserve God's salvation. We don't deserve all the blessings that accompany that salvation. We do deserve God's judgment and God's punishment for our sins. No doubt about it. I know I do. Thank him every day that I don't, I'm not there. Nevertheless, God in his great mercy judged and punished his son in our place. Can you, can you understand that? I can. So when we repent and genuinely believe in Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven and we stand justified before God. And God views us as just as if we have never sinned. And God's mercy is the theme of Psalm 103. In this Psalm, David expresses a, a deep, deep awareness of God's great mercy in his life. He had committed terrible sin, adultery and murder. And although he had suffered the devastating consequences of his sin, God had forgiven and restored him. In previous Psalms, David talked about the inescapable guilt that gripped his soul because of this, of his despicable sins. But nowhere in this Psalm does he mention that guilt. God in his boundless mercy and goodness had not only forgiven David, but he had also apparently healed him of these self-inflicted wounds on his own soul. And David just began this psalm with an eruption of praise to the Lord. <laughs> to bless the Lord is to praise and to express love, gratitude for all that God is and for all that he does. And with all that was within him, his whole being, the depths of his innermost self, David blessed God for who he is, and for his unlimited goodness to his people. Listen to verse one. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. So the first thing David does here is he, he blesses and exalts the, the holy God, bless his holy name. Yahweh or Jehovah is God's personal name more than any of his other names. The, what this name reveals is his heart and, and what he's like. It's the name by which he re revealed himself to his people and, and established his covenant with them. Over in Exodus chapter 6, as the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, he is the God who makes and keeps his covenant, his promises with his people, pledging to them his unfailing love and his total faithfulness. Did you notice, bless his holy name? We have to come to grips with that right off. God's name is holy, sacred, hallowed, consecrated. It is to be so revered, so honored that God commanded his people never, ever, don't take his name in vain, never to use it commonly, never to use it casually or insincerely. We are to set God's name apart, never daring to use it in any way that demeans or takes away from the sacredness of that name. Let's pick it up at verse two and read down through verse five, okay? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your, redeems your life from destruction, 
who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So David blessed the Lord secondly for his goodness to his people. He admonished himself, you know, not to forget God's benefits, all of his blessings. David lists seven benefits that God in his lavish goodness freely gives us. First of all, in the first part of verse three, he says, forgiveness of our sins, who has forgiven us all our iniquities. He has forgiven all our sins. I just, I could spend the rest of the the day on just that truth. God forgives all our sins. Not some, not a few, not 170, not 986, but he forgives all our iniquities, all our sins. You know, that's all my past sins. And it's also all my future sins. And I, 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 I sometimes I hesitate saying that because I don't want to, you know, think I'm going to take advantage of that. When you fall in love with Jesus, you don't want to take advantage. When you realize what he's done for you and who he is, you're not wanting to find loopholes. But he's forgiven all of our sins. We're children of God. We stumble, we fall, we make wrong decisions at times, we make wrong choices, we do stupid things, we, we sin, and he's faithful and just to forgive us all of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We need to confess those things and recognize, God, I'm, I'm off base here. I've, I've walked into something here I'm not supposed to be, and I did it. I was well aware of what I was doing. I didn't mean to get so caught up. I thought I could just, you know, be here for a little bit and be no big deal, and... Uh, you know, it is um, it is a big deal. I'm outside of the parameters of your will for my life, God, and I, I want to confess that to you. And he says, I forgive you, Chuck. And he says, you, I forgive you, man. Whoever you are, he'll forgive you. Just confess it to him. Then turn and go the other direction. Well, I can't believe that. Oh, yeah, not on your own, you can't. You, you can't get out of sin by yourself. But God in his mercy and his grace that we've already talked about, will take you, turn around with you, and walk alongside and strengthen you to make the right decisions. In the meantime, he's forgiving all of your sins. It goes on in verse three, it says, you know, um, who heals all your diseases. Now that's kind of interesting, you know, because when, when it heals all of our diseases, he doesn't necessarily do that in the way that we think he always should. Now, sometimes God heals instantaneously. I've seen that happen. It's happened in my own life. People prayed for me and I was instantaneously healed. There were other times I've been prayed for and nothing happened. Well, God healed me anyway, but he, he healed me through the medical profession. He let me take some, some medications and maybe did a surgery on me and my heart did some things to bring me back to, to my health. And so sometimes God heals instantaneously. Sometimes God heals progressively over a period of time. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm supposed to learn. Maybe you're supposed to learn in the process. Maybe there's something he knows if we get healed that would be devastating to us and not beneficial to us because he's only going to allow things in our lives that cause good. Even though we, we think that illness is bad, maybe it's a good thing compared with other things that, that are happening. I don't know. Maybe it's other people need to witness us and see how we live this life you know, with that in our lives? I, I don't know, but there's sometimes there's a progressive healing and a period of time and he heals us. Other times it's what I call perfect, complete healing. He did that with Wanda, my, my bride of almost 60 years. One day she was out of that old cruddy body that had given her so much trouble the last few years of her life and she was given a brand new one that has no problems. It'll never hurt, never give her any pain. There'll be no sorrow. There'll be none of that. It's brand new and she's in his presence now and she has been healed completely and totally. And one day as believers, 
we will all be healed completely and totally. And you know, I'm, I'm so waiting for that day. Also says in, in first part of verse four there, it says, uh, who redeems your life from destruction. Redemption, this is another benefit. So it's forgiveness of our sins, healing of our diseases. And then verse four, it says, redemption of our lives from destruction, from death, from the pit. A picture of our enslaving sin and its deadly consequences. You know, we get caught up in sin sometimes and and in its in its in its lore because it, it, it pretends to be so satisfying. Sin seems to be a lot of fun. You know, that's the way it's presented to us by the enemy. Now, this, you know, you're missing something here. This is good, it's not bad. It's really good. Look at all the fun you can have, all the fun other people are having. Well, sin may start out a lot of fun, but it doesn't end up that way. Sin always destroys. Sin always brings destruction. Sin always brings pain and hurt. It just does. That's what sin does. See, the enemy wants to destroy us, wants to bring us to hurt and pain and confusion and frustration. And God crowns us with, with these, uh, these good things. He, re he redeems our life from destruction. Not gonna be destroyed. I put on the full armor of God. I'm going to walk with him every day and I'm going to choose to acknowledge his, his presence every single day. I'm going to experience wholeness. It goes on, second part of verse four. It says, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. That's his steadfast, unfailing love. Loving kindness. Just look at that one first. Just loving kindness. Um, I don't know how to explain that. I've never found a real good definition of that. It's, um, it's a Hebrew word that's hard to explain. It's, uh, I can't even pronounce it for you because <laughs> I'm not good at that. But it's a steadfast, unfailing love. It's a loving kindness that says, I'm here. I'll take all the, I'll, I'll take all the heat for that. I'll take all the ramifications for that problem. I'll take all the, all, the, all the pain. I'll take all the hurt. I'll carry it for you. I will walk with you. I will cover it. You don't have to, to go through this. I'll walk it through with you. I'll take it through with you. I'll take the shots. My burden is easy, you know, and, and it's light and it's okay. And it's this loving kindness that constantly, I know you fell, but I picked you back up and we're, and we're gonna make it. You know, my, my love is steadfast. It's unfailing. I, I, I know you made mistakes, but hey, we're, we're back up now and I'm, my arm's around you and you're strong and we're gonna walk through this and it's, it's really good. It's, it's really okay. That's a benefit, his loving kindness. <laughs> and tender mercies. These are excessive acts of love with which the Lord crowns us because we are his royal sons and daughters. So there's that covering, there's that tender mercy. It's a keep your hands off of them. Keep your hands off of her. Keep your hands off of him. He's mine. He's a child of mine. He's a son of the king. And so there's that, 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 that excessive acts of love that he's there and taking care of us. He's always got angels around, you know. They're there too, you know, doing things. And the spirit of God lives within us. And so, so incredible, man. Verse five, who satisfies your mouth with good things. Um, that's, that's spiritual longings. He'll, he'll satisfy you with, with spiritual longings and, 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 and good things in, in that way. You know, that, that you're just, you're able to speak truth. You're able to speak wholeness and, and speak kindness. And you don't have to speak hurt and pain and destruction. And you can speak kindness because there's a, there's a spiritual thing going on in your life because of his, his work in, in our lives so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That's just physical and spiritual renewal. 
like the restored strength the eagle uh, receives when it sheds its old feathers and and in the molting process and there's a there's a strength there and when I look at that I also sing think of Psalm 31 they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint and that's a promise and that's what that's what this verse is saying that strength that 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 wholeness that 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 vibrancy you know that that spiritual renewal that even that physical even when we're older even when we're sometimes you know there's just that uh there's sometimes i feel i can't go another step and god says we're going to do this son yeah we are and he gives me the strength to get up and go and just take care of it. I think, let's just think about this for a second, okay? A lack of thankfulness, a lack of praise uh, to God is a result of, of taking his blessings for granted. All too often we can, we can only see the, the difficult circumstances facing us or the things that we don't have or that we really want and they're not, it's not happening. Completely overlooking all that we have in Jesus Christ. On our very worst days, we have genuinely trusted Christ. We are forgiven and we're redeemed. If we've, if we've trusted him, we're forgiven and we're redeemed on our worst of days. We are sons and daughters of God. We are recipients of, of his unfailing love and his tender mercies. Everything we've talked about, they're ours. We have a peace and an inner satisfaction that this stinking world can't even offer us, man. The challenges of life, hear me, are simply temporary. But the benefits of God's goodness and God's mercy is eternal. We need to take our eyes off of off of the things that we can that we can see, the afflictions and the difficulties of our life, and focus on those things for a while that we that we can't see. The eternal blessings that God has so mercifully given to us. When we do, like David, we will overflow with praise because all of a sudden we're viewing him for who he is and what he's accomplished in our lives and, and, and what's that, what that's all about. And, and we just think about the salvation that we have and the tender mercies that he gives us and the, the grace that he shows in our lives and the loving kindness and redeeming our life from destruction and forgiving all of my iniquities and all of my sins and on and on and on. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ready for this? The Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. It says in Ephesians 1, 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Jesus, just think about these things. We start thinking about these things and, and, and then and we're gonna be praising him and blessing him a lot more than we do. First Peter 1, 3 says this, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again into a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Psalm 34, 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall what? Continually be on my lips. Psalm 145, 1. I will extol thee, O God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. That's what I desire to do. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. Just, you know, present to us in just the first five verses. We'll pick up verse six tomorrow. But the first five verses, when it's all about God's mercy and it's all about praising him and worshiping him and, and we'll, we'll do that once we understand his mercy, once we, we think about his grace and once we think about all the blessings that we have, 
just those blessings in those first five verses, you know, actually verse two through five, it just, they're incredible. I mean, that's enough to read, that's enough to, to have me praising from now through eternity. If there was nothing else, and there is, but just those things would absolutely give me enough to praise him about. So when I gather with my brothers and sisters and we begin to worship and praise, it'll be beautiful. It'll be wonderful because we're worshiping for who he is. Not just trying to get into the music or to the spirit of things, but really praising him for who he is. Father, I thank you for these. Thank you for this psalm that has meant so much to me for so many years. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your loving kindness. I thank you for your salvation. I thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your protection. Oh Lord, teach us how to worship you in spirit and in truth, how to worship you for who you are and what you've done for us. We bless your name, sweet Jesus. We love you. Amen. Well, we will pick it up there in verse six tomorrow in Psalm 103. I knew this psalm would take us a little longer because I just love every verse of this psalm. It is so, so healing, so refreshing, so comforting in the midst of a world that's falling apart around us. It's in a peck of trouble. We're still in the protection of the almighty God of this universe. Well, I guess I'm gonna start all over another Bible study. Nope, this will be for tomorrow. God bless you.